It is week six of the SPL Draft League, and today we are matched up against Playmore. As always, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about the matchup. We'll go in depth on the team that I decided to bring, and then we will get into the match. So to start things off, my dude has honestly probably one of my favorite teams just by looking at the entire draft board. And also it comes with some huge threats. Now their top pick being Iron Valiant has an interesting matchup here to where I really feel like this thing is kind of forced to go on a physical attacking route to be able to uh, do anything to the Galarian Sloking by clicking like knockoff. So I do want to try to base my team more physically defensive in thoughts that this thing, I mean, it can obviously go special, it can go mixed, it can go physical. Uh, it's, it's a really tough Pokemon to try to figure out what it's going to do, and that makes things a, a little bit weird for prep. Now, they also have, like, the Garchomp that can be run for Stealth Rocks. It can be, like, a scale shot one to try to set up. Garchomp is very scary. They also have the Metagross that has a whole lot of new toys at its disposal. Um, so Metagross is always a, a potential setup monster or like an assault vest set. They have speed with the Hisuian Electrode. Um, and other than that, there's things that I'm afraid of like the Chandelure can hit uh, my team pretty decently on the special side. So I do want to try to bring some checks to that. Uh, along with things like the Glastrier has the ability to hit my team really hard with ice moves as I don't really have anything that resists that barring bear tick which obviously doesn't even count um but uh yeah super interesting team matchup here it should result in a pretty solid game and let's go ahead and take a look at the team that i am gonna bring here so first of all we're going with the choice scarf darkrai now this thing is running scarf mostly just because it's actually it's able to outspeed iron valiant even if it has a plus one from a booster energy speed and i can also knock that thing out with a sludge bomb in return now it also opens the door for me to be able to trick a potential switch in and just try to stir things up that way. I have the Dark Pulse to be able to hit the Metagross and anything else with decent stab. And I have the um, the Ice Beam to be able to hit like Chestnut and things like the Crocodile. So, and of course the Garchomp. Darkrai is just here to just be fast uh, and hit hard and do Darkrai stuff that it hasn't been able to do so far, which is funny, but uh, that is the Darkrai. Next up, we have the Galarian Slowking that is going to be coming paired with the uh, the Bear Tick, obviously with the Chili Reception. This thing is just going with straight up max HP, max defense, plus defense nature. That's going to allow me to be able to take a knockoff from the Iron Valiant, um, but also pretty much any physical attack from like even an Earthquake from the Crocodile. And this thing just needs to be physical because a lot of the threats... Uh, on their team feel like they're gonna hit me on the physical side and this is I feel like the best way for me to be able to keep this thing alive to get the chili reception off uh, to be able to enable the bear tick so this time bear tick is gonna be working with the choice band with the slush rush we're gonna be faster than pretty much everything except for you know potential choice scarfers However, with the Choice Band, I'm able to do a lot of damage to everything with an Icicle Crash. I have to run the Terra Blast Electric to try to catch the Vaporeon switch-ins. I also have the Earthquake coverage for it, things like the Metagross uh, and Chandelure. And then I have Close Combat to be able to hit like the Glastier or uh, also the Crocodile. But in general, I feel like Choice Band is nice here because it's going to just be able to do more damage than I feel like they expect. Uh, plus, the Sword Stand sets haven't really been working, and I just figure, you know what, we're going to switch it up a little bit here, toss the Choice Band here, and uh, Bear Tick is just to, just supposed to get some damage and potentially be the main Terra option. Now, I also have another Terra option in the form of the Jolteon. This thing is running Terra Fairy in case the opportunity arises uh, to where I can go for an Alluring Voice with that Terra Fairy should be able to knock out uh, things like a Garchomp. It also has great coverage against things like the Iron Valiant and I can outspeed. And also I'm running the Throat Spray. That's to be able to give myself a plus one special attack boost when I do click the Alluring Voice. Uh, and in general, Jolteon is extremely fast here. And I feel like I have really good coverage against pretty much their entire team. I have to have the Shadow Ball to try to catch the Chandelure. Uh, and in general, my plan is to try to get a Calm Mind up with the Jolteon plus an Alluring Voice. And at plus two, I knock pretty much everything out. And again, I'm extremely fast with this. So that's the plan with the Jolteon. And then we have the Gyarados. So again, uh, going to be running Max Defense Gyarados. This thing is literally Max HP, Max Defense with a Max Defense or plus Defense Nature. That is because... Uh, there is just so many offensive threats, and it's going to be one of the only mons that I have to deal with that. So I'm running the Heavy Duty Boots with Intimidate because I'm able to switch in super nicely to things like the Crocodile. I can come in on Cyclozar. I can come in on Chestnut. I can switch into Garchomp. Uh, Metagross, ob obviously, probably going to be running the Clear Body, but at max defense, I can Earthquake and still do some pretty solid damage to that. Uh, plus the Iron Valiant, unless it's running mixed, which it might be, uh, having coverage with a Thunderbolt, even being a physical attacker, I can at least potentially come into that if they're not prepped for the Gyarados. 
Uh, and this thing is just here to be an Intimidate Menace and also potentially Thunder Wave some stuff. I have the Ice Fang uh, for the Garchomp and uh, it's going to be kind of my main answer to the Garchomp. So that leads us into our final Pokemon and we're going to be working with the Sylveon. So this is actually an interesting Sylveon set where I'm working with the Custap Berry. And the reason for that is because I also pair it with the Endure. So knowing that I can be able to go for an Endure to take an attack, it's going to knock me down to whatever 1 HP if I'm able to hold on, uh, and then be able to activate the Custat Berry to move first when I'm not uh, supposed to be able to. So Custat Berry, Hyper Voice, should be able to do a lot of damage to pretty much their entire team. Uh, and Sylveon is also going to be uh, bulky enough with the max HP here to take attacks easily from like Chandelure. Um, and I also have some defense investment to hopefully be able to take attacks um, from those physical attackers. But also I have the wish support uh, to potentially be able to pass some, some healing around and then Shadow Ball to be able to hit the Chandelure. So that is going to be the team and uh, let's go ahead and get into the match. It is game time, boys. So right off the bat from the team preview, I notice there's a couple things they didn't bring that I did expect, like the Asuian Electrode with the ability to Terra. They also do not have anything like the Cyclozar or the Chandelure. So I honestly feel pretty good about that. I also, I did not expect to see Weezing, which uh, is quite interesting, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so they're gonna go ahead and lead off with the Glastrier. Now, I decided to lead off with the Jolteon because it's a fast pivot and anything other than Crocodile takes a Volt Switch and does a decent amount of damage and gives me a pivot. Now, Glastrier is a very scary Pokemon in preparation, I realize, Nothing, I don't have anything on my team barring Bear Tick that resists ice. So that is extremely unfortunate. And we're going to see, uh, they actually do, do go ahead and commit the Terra here. So this is their secondary Terra captain. Did expect this thing to Terra. However, I did not expect this thing to go for the straight up Ice Terra. That's going to just go ahead and boost this thing's ice damage to a crazy level. As I get a nice little Volt Switch here, it is going to give some solid chip as this thing is pretty damn defensive. But I get the Volt Switch there and I literally, I do not have much that wants to come in on an Ice Skill Crash from this, especially with that boost in Ice Terra. Uh, but what I do have as my best option is going to be Max Defensive Gyarados. I literally had to build this thing with 252 HP, 252 defense, and it's even a plus defense nature. Now I can come in, I can get that Intimidate, drop its attack, do all that I can, as they do just go for the expected Ice Skull Crash. Now of course Gyarados does not resist this because of the flying type, and that does over half as a two hit KO. At minus one, there's literally not a Gyarados that could be more defensive, and that tells me that this thing is choice banned. And Gyarados is actually really important in this matchup. I really need it to kind of uh, check their offensive threats with Intimidate. However, at this point, there's literally nothing I can do. I decide to go for the Thunder Wave, knowing at least I'm faster. I can paralyze this thing and try to, you know, at least cripple what this thing can do later on in the match. And I do actually end up getting a full para on the first turn, which is actually super nice. Now, at this point, of course, I I cannot switch. Literally, nothing comes in on an Ice Glow Crash, is <laughs> even at minus one attack. And I decide I'm just going to go for a Waterfall. Uh, I can try to roll for a Flinch or another Parachance. That does literally nothing because this Gyarados does... It had to go fully defensive. Um, however, they do break through and another Ice Glow Crash is going to knock out the Gyarados. So, right off the bat, that is extremely bad. I really was counting on having Gyarados with boots to be able to switch in. Uh, constantly getting Intimidates on physical attackers and uh, being able to check things like the Metagross. However, we lose the Gyarados straight away, and at this point, I really don't have a great amount of offensive option options to switch into this. But what I do have is a Choice Banded Bear Tick. Now, ordinarily, Bear Tick without the snow up is very slow. However, of course, I can outspeed this thing. I can pressure it with a close combat, and it's really kind of the only thing I can click at this point. I don't want to get crazy um, and end up losing Bear Tick early. So I decide to just go for the close combat, as this is going to bring in their pretty much their Bear Tick check. Uh, which comes in the form of wheezing. So I beat up the Disco Balls and that does yeah, pretty much nothing. A Choice Banded Close Combat obviously does not really hurt this thing, um, but I really, it, it felt like it was a play that I kind of needed to go for. Obviously, I felt like they weren't going to leave in the Glass Jar, but I also knew that without a considerable amount of chip on the wheezing, Ice Go Crash, even with the Choice Band, isn't going to be a two-hit KO straight off the bat. So I need some type of chip on this wheezing before uh, the Ice Go Crash is going to do too much. Now, the other reason why I'm not worried about this thing really coming in is because I can just go straight into the Galarian Slow King on this thing, and I have a solid matchup. However, they actually make a double switch, predict me to go into uh, the Great Weezing check, and they're just going to make uh, a solid double switch and bring in the Crocodile, who uh, obviously threatens the Slow King. And I have been 
on the back foot the entire match so far, where there's only been a few turns, but uh, it's a rough start. So, at least, however, I'm going to make a play here. I know that they're probably not going to go straight for the obvious Earthquake, uh, which would pretty much kill me. Um, but instead, I predict them to go for something like that Stealth Rock, and this allows me to get the Chilly Reception off. So this is Icy Rock, Galarian Sloking to be able to make the Snow Stick around, as uh, Offensive Bear Tick is kind of my best bet at this point. So, with the Snow up, I also get a nice little pivot, and I decide I kind of just have to go into a bear tick at this point. The Crocodile at full HP, uh, it takes an attack from pretty much everything other than the bear tick. So, uh, bear tick being choice banded, this is a situation where, okay, I can actually, I can go for the Icicle Crash, which obviously threatens out the Crocodile, uh, but now as I'm running Calx, I realize, wheezing with the amount of health that it has, it should be a two hit KO uh, to this Icicle Crash. So, they do bring back in the wheezing. Neutralizing gas is interesting because it gets rid of my Slush Rush, but obviously I'm still gonna be faster than the wheezing regardless. Uh, and it does look like even after the Black Sludge, um, the Icicle Crash is going to be a two-hit KO. So I'm thinking, okay, this is actually perfect. This is where Choice Band Bear Tick is unexpected and is able to do more uh, than you would think. But I just go for the second Icicle Crash here, as they're actually going to end up switching that thing out, and they make a, a very nice play in bringing back in the freaking Ice Horse. So this thing comes in, and the defense is insane. It obviously resists, but a Choice Banded Icicle Crash... Uh, does literally nothing. I was kind of hoping it would potentially be a two-hit KO if they did switch into this, um, and it is not. So at this point, I'm forced to make a switch. Bear Tick is way too useful. I'm stuck in Ice School Crash. The only thing I can really go in here is going to be the Sylveon. Now, I'm expecting them to go for a close combat here. That's the move I'm thinking they're going to go for, and I feel like uh, this Sylveon has defensive investment to take physical attack. So I bring in the Sylveon, hoping maybe they get paralyzed. They do not, and they also don't click close combat. They go for the heavy slam, which is a great play because it covers for the Sylveon switch in, and that just straight up kills the Sylveon. I probably should have seen the heavy slam coming and switched into something, I, I don't know. There's not much that wants to switch into this uh, again, but at least now I'm gonna go for a crazy play. I decide to go into Jolteon here. Now the reason is, even after a chilling nade boost, I'm feeling like I should be able to take a heavy slam if it breaks through the paralysis. Now also, there's a solid chance that they get fully paired here. I'm gonna instead go for, just straight up go for a Calm Mind. I feel like if I can set up this Jolteon uh, with a para here, or even living a Heavy Slam, I'm gonna be in a pretty solid spot uh, at a plus one special attack and then be able to get an Alluring Voice off, which is gonna give me another special attack boost. And Jolteon is faster than their entire team, barring uh, anything with a Choice Scarf. So I decide to go for the Calm Mind here. Gonna just make the offensive play to try to just swing some momentum back on my side here. Um, so I get that Calm Mind up, and we're looking pretty solid here. However, they do break through the Paralysis, and a Heavy Slam after the Chilling Nade Boost does in fact kill me, which means I believe this thing is, it has to be adamant with the Choice Band, because uh, I think I was calcing it not being adamant um, and showing that I had like a pretty solid chance to live that even at plus one. But yeah, adamant uh, is, I think, still a roll, but it does take care of me there. Down goes the Jolteon, and I very much should have just gone right into Darkrai against this thing. Um, so I lose Jolteon, which is kind of my secondary best offense threat against their team. Um, and I'm basically just, I, I basically have lost the game to this horse at this point. Um, I, I can go into Darkrai, which I very much should have gone into earlier. I decide to go for the Dark Pulse. It does take care of it. Uh, down goes the glass chair, but not before. It pretty much ruined the, my entire team. So um, the reason why I didn't want to go into Darkrai initially and I felt like the Jolteon play had a higher payoff was because if I got a Calm Mind for free and then killed a, with a Luring Voice, I'm in such a good... Um, spot with that, but the reason why going into Darkrai is scary because obviously I lock myself into Dark Pulse and this allows them to bring in the Iron Valiant. So Iron Valiant is a dude who can obviously take a Dark Pulse, but also they don't know that I'm Choice Scarf, so that means that they're probably Choice Scarf themselves or something like that. Um, and I basically, I have to switch out Darkrai and I decide to go into the Galarian Sloking who does come in very nicely on Iron Valiant, except they actually predict that again and they decide to go into Metagross here. So not the matchup that I wanted. Um, however, I'm kind of stuck at this point. I'm running out of switch-ins, and that's kind of the moral of the story here, as Bear Tick is looking like it's kind of my win condition here. I'm also in an incredibly annoying spot because there's one turn of snow left, meaning uh, I cannot go for a chilly reception and still get the snow up, so it puts me in a spot where I'm forced to switch into Darkrai here, 
um, who has a small chance to live an attack depending on what they go for, um, but they actually just go for another Heavy Slam that does take care of the Darkrai. And this game was lost about five turns ago anyway, so I mean Darkrai goes down. Uh, however, the snow does go away, and that does at least open the door for a hilarious small glimmer of hope where I can go back uh, into the Gloking here who finally can at least, I know I can take an attack from this thing because I have the defense investment. Uh, however, it's gonna at least allow me to get up the chilling reception and then see what Barrack Tick can do against the, the pretty much their entire team. So uh, they do go for another heavy slam here. I am able to take it nicely because again, this is a max defense uh, Galarian Sloking. The offensive, the physical threats on their team uh, it kind of forced me to run a lot of defense, but I can go for that chilling reception, uh, makes it snow. We also get the hell out of here, which does activate my regenerator, so I'm going to get some health back. Uh, but at this point, I am forced to just go into Bear Tick here, who, with the Choice Band, has kind of a wild decision to make, where, like, the Choice Band really hurts me here, and that I threaten this thing out with the, the threat of an Earthquake. Um, however, they do just have other mons in the back that can take that, but I just decide to go for the EQ here uh, as they are going to end up switching out. And knowing that I, the Earthquake is actually free because of the fact that we know that the Weezing is neutralizing gas rather than levitate, so they can switch into this thing. You can uh, spew out the old neutralizing gas, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, at least I, I'm going to be able to get the Earthquake off and take out the Weezing. Um, I also go for the Terra Electric just in case that uh, Metagross did stay in and go for the Heavy Slam. I at least would be able to resist it, and at this point there's really no reason not to just click the uh, the Terra Electric. It's going to make me resist a bullet punch later, um, and yeah, I go for the Earthquake. It does take care of the Weezing, so hey, at least we're I'm, I'm taking care of some stuff there, and uh, down goes that thing. However, Bear Tick being stuck into Earthquake, I am faster than everything barring Choice Scarfers, except I'm stuck into EQ. So they now decide to bring in the Crocodile, and... It would take an Earthquake ordinarily, especially with an Intimidate. So Intimidate basically puts me in a spot where, okay, Earthquake does not kill. I die to an Earthquake in return, and really the only thing I can do here is just switch back into Galarian Slowking, and then try to let Beartig use the remaining slow tur uh, snow turns that are left. So, I bring back in Brian. He's got his brain being leached by the crazy-ass sh shell. And actually a pretty... Pretty pimp in hat, not gonna lie. But it goes for that EQ. Of course, that is gonna take care. Actually, wait, no, I live with one HP. Psych, bitch, I live with one, which actually ends up hurting me because I just lose a turn of snow because of that. But uh, max, H or max HP, max defense in bold allows me to take an earthquake there, which is kind of crazy. But it does finish me off with one more. And now my final Pokemon is gonna be the Bear Tick, which honestly seems like, it seems like a lot of the time that is the case. In, while Bear Tick is kind of a threat, it's actually it's not super good because it's one of my least valuable mines and it always turns out to be my strongest threat in all these matches. But I just decided to go for the Icicle Crash here. It would take care of the Crocodile. However, they're going to make the safe play and switch out. That thing can come back in later, get an Intimidate, and plus they have no reason to not switch that thing out. Not only does it maintain uh, their differential, meaning they're going to win the game with more Pokemon left, but also they do have the Vaporeon who actually takes more damage from an Icicle Crash than I would have thought there, to be honest. Um, I'm running Terror Blast, obviously, to be able to hit this thing. However, um, I am Choice Banded into the Icicle Crash here. This allows them to then go for the Scald. Knocks me down to 13 HP, but doesn't get the burn. So I'm like, hey, all right, maybe I can get like a flinch or a crit here on this next Icicle Crash. Um, but they're actually just going to save the Vaporeon. Make sure that they can win the game with the remaining four Pokemon left by just going into the Metagross here. This thing obviously lives in Icicle Crash easily and then it is going to be able to finish me off with a priority bullet punch. So that is going to be the end of the game, and that was probably the worst one for me yet. Um, not because of anything that swung necessarily out of my favor, but just because I did not prep well or play well or do anything that put me in a spot where I felt like I had any bit of momentum for the entire match. But hey, shout out to my dude for a fantastic game. Uh, they are a very good draft player, and uh, it truly, truly shows in the prep and also the, uh, the the predictions there. So thank you guys very much for watching. We're going to finish this shit 0-8, which is hilarious, and I will catch you next time.